Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning back here again for another video. This is Son of Liberty. Now, regardless if you've stumbled across this video and you are a seasoned veteran of the preparedness community, or you're brand new just now starting off trying to figure out where to start with building your own preparedness kit, there's gonna be information in this video beneficial to both of you. Now, before we actually get to the body of the video, one of the things that I want to direct, especially to those individuals that are brand new to preparedness, is that one of the things that this video does not cover is the topic of self-protection. Now, I realize that that may seem very odd, uh, especially to a lot of people, uh, but please hear me out. Now, it should be no secret to the stance that this platform has on anything related to self-protection. So one of the things that I don't want to see is this particular video get censored to oblivion and it not be able to reach the people that can benefit the most from it. And lastly, one of the things that typically I see over and over again in videos relating to self-protection is in the comment section. It just unravels to bickering and fighting among the community. People want to say that this particular item is better than that one. Everyone should have this and everyone should have that. In my opinion, it really kind of takes away from the main focus of this video, and that's just to truly help someone, especially if they are new to preparedness. So without further ado guys enjoy the video and I wish you the very best of luck on your endeavors and your journey into preparedness. All right, guys, so this is my own personal bug out bag. Now, there are a lot of bags like this one, but this one is mine. So there are a lot of different names for this particular bag, right? Emergency kit, survival bag, get out of dodge bag, 72 hour kit, the list goes on and on, right? That's not really what's important, but what is important is the items that we choose to carry on the inside. So in today's video, I'm going to be breaking this bag down, sharing with you guys the contents that I chose to go with, as well as the reason why I went with this particular type of bag. So whether you are a seasoned veteran or you're looking at building your very first bag, there's going to be information beneficial to both of you. All right, guys, let's get into this thing. Now, very briefly before I get diving into the internals of this bag, let me share with you guys the reason why I chose this particular bag. So I was looking for a few things when I was looking for my bug out bag. So I was looking for a company that had a great reputation. Uh, now what you guys are looking at is the QU Adventure 1800. A um, couple things that um, really hit home for me was the fact that this company has been making outdoor products for a long time. They've been doing it very well and they have a great reputation in the industry, okay? Number two is I was looking for a color a pattern that would kind of blend into the natural vegetation of my area. So if you guys look around me here, this is the typical color of vegetation this time of year in East Tennessee. So that check that box for me. But a byproduct of this color pattern, as you guys see here, is that if I wanted to hide this bag, you know, stash it someplace in a wooded area, um, you know, that I could come back later, and I wanted to make sure no one else found it, this color pattern is just gonna help me do that a bit easier. Number three, I was looking for a bag that had a lot of different compartments, and this one definitely fits that uh, criteria. So there are a lot of uh, pockets more so internally than there is externally, but it's important because, you know, I want things structured in a way that's going to benefit me. For example, you know, if I have some kind of injury, uh, all of my medical items are here on this outside compartment, okay? So I can get to it very easily. I don't have to dig to the inside of the bag to get that, uh, you know, that critical piece of equipment. If uh, it starts to just pour down the rain, I've got my rain uh, gear here on the outside, and then I've got my boonie here on the top you know, don everything and I'm good to go. Also to the rain fly that, um, that I bought for this particular bag, that's on the outside here. So that way it's easy to get to and make sure to keep all of my gear dry. And lastly, the one thing that was very important to me was to find a bag that had an internal frame. So if you're new to hiking, okay, backpacks typically either have no frame they have an external frame or an internal frame, okay? So this one is an internal frame and there is a wired frame that is built into the inside of this bag. And what that does is that gives this bag additional structure, which is gonna make this bag more stable under weight as I'm carrying it, okay? So that's gonna help me uh, carry the weight a bit easier, all right? Now, if you're wondering how much this bag weighs in its current configuration, right now it weighs 28 pounds. Now, some of you guys may think, 
that seems pretty light. Um, but if you talk to any hikers that have actually hiked the AT, their target goal is between 18 to 21 pounds uh, in their actual bags, okay? So that's obviously carrying a, a bag over very long distances and over multiple states, okay? So anyway, that is just some food for thought and the reason why I went with the QU Adventure 1800. All right, guys, so now that I've got everything laid out here, uh, a few of the items I'm gonna hold off to the very end, okay, which is gonna be my tent, uh, my sleeping bag, as well as my sleeping pad. The reason being is because I have a very unorthodox approach to camping and lower temperatures, and so I wanna hold that off to the very end. Now, one of the items that I had mentioned earlier was a rain fly. You have no idea how heavier that your bag can be when the items inside, as well as your bag, is saturated with water. Um, it feels like there's an extra 15 pounds somebody slipped into your bag when you wasn't looking, okay? So anyway, very important to have something like this to not only keep your bag dry, but the contents dry as well. Let's actually talk about rain gear next, okay? So I have a military style boonie. This is from Triple Alt Design. It's got a hidden pocket in the top so you can keep documents, cash, those types of things. Uh, but not only does it help uh, keep the sun off of my head and my face, it's gonna help keep rain off of my face as well. And then I've got the mili military style Generation 3 Gore-Tex. Uh, rain jacket and rain pants, okay? Um, obviously, you don't have to go with multi-cam. Um, I had these extra from a gun show that I purchased, and so I decided to put those in my kit, all right? Next, I've got a good high-quality pair of t-shirt, underwear, as well as socks, and then I've just ranger rolled them in here, and that just takes up less space um, inside of my bag. Now, the other items that I've got for colder temperatures is simply uh, this face mask as well as this beanie, okay? Now, if you've never camped in lower temperatures, one of the best things that you can do to kind of help keep your body warmer at night when you sleep is to buy sleeping with a beanie, okay? Uh, or a skull cap, whatever that you choose to call it. This uh, will benefit you more than you could ever know. So I keep that in there, obviously, as well as this. Uh, in temperatures like I'm dealing with today where it's 80 degrees, these are things that I would literally just toss to the side because I'm not going to need them right now, all right? And obviously, that's just going to save me a few ounces of weight. If you are unfamiliar with the terminology, ounces equals pounds, pounds equals pain, usually people like me have to find that out the hard way. So anyway, just remember that. So let's talk about food very quickly, right? So let me share with you guys the items that I chose to carry. Now this is gonna vary person to person. Uh, so if you are an individual that has um, allergies or a, a lot of allergies to food, uh, or maybe you are a diabetic, that is obviously going to dictate the type of food that you are going to choose to carry in your bag. Now the way I've got mine broken down is I've got some snacks. Uh, these are protein bars. Uh, so these this is gonna give me the ability to eat on the go so that I don't have to stop and actually prepare a meal. So again, just a way to keep my sugar levels um, up, um, obviously help replenish some of the energy that I've lost and stay on the go. Next up, I've got mountain house food. I've got two of these. Now the benefit to these is they take up uh, you know, very little space, they're freeze dried, um, and they last a very long time in storage. Um, you also cook these inside of the actual bag. So this is the actual, pretty much everything that you need, minus the spoon and the water. Now, if you are new to this, that's okay. So freeze dried essentially is just all the water taken out of the food. Uh, and then of course it's dried and obviously uh, contained in this vacuum sealed pack. The downside to Mountain House and other type of freeze dried food is that it takes a lot of water in order to make these, okay? So that's gonna be more of a concern if you're in a type of environment where there's not a lot of uh, you know, natural water sources. Uh, maybe you're in a desert uh, type of environment, those types of things. So anyway, just some food for thought uh, when it comes to freeze-dried food. Now, uh, this is a MRE, so if you're in an environment where water is a concern, this may be a better solution for you. Now, this, um, I've actually taken this out of the external sleeve. It takes up less room, so MREs come in a big, like, waterproof, thick bag that obviously just helps protect them from the environment so they last a lot longer. Um, but you actually don't even need any water to cook these, okay? You can just eat them the way that they are, I do prefer them to be heated, okay? So there is a little plastic sleeve, if you're unfamiliar, right here. And so what you do is that it only requires about 
an ounce, maybe two ounces of water. You fill it to that line right there, and then you actually cook your main meal, slide it down inside of here, and it takes just a few moments, and you've got a hot meal, and it only requires, again, one to two ounces of water in order to prepare your warm food. Um, I find that warm food definitely um, charges me or recharges me a lot better, and so that's the reason why, again, I've got a little bit of a variation of snacks, freeze-dried, as well as MRE food sources. All right, so now that we've covered food, let's talk about water. Now, I approach water a little bit differently than most people uh, versus carrying very large containers or such as an internal water bladder in my bag. I like to break my um, kits, uh, my water bags up into smaller containers. Um, what I've got right here is uh, two one liter bags, uh, a two liter as well as another two liter, okay? Now this one actually has an internal uh, water filter on the inside of this one, so that's the reason why I went with this particular one. Um, but what this does is this gives me the ability to disseminate my water, especially if I have another person with me, okay? Um, this also gives me the ability to keep a better um, eye, in my opinion, on the, the amount of water that I've got versus having to take my pack off to look at the amount of water that I have um, in my reservoir, such as a bladder on the inside of my bag. Um, again, this way I can, you know, set aside a particular amount or one of these bags specifically for cooking. Or again, if I'm gonna share water with someone else. Now, the next thing I'm gonna cover is my fuel source as well as my stove for cooking, okay? Now, I like to go with something a little bit more simpler than some of the other, you know, setups on the market. I like this particular style just because it gives me everything that I need. It also contains and holds my fuel source, as well as this piece of plastic, which is essentially a platform. It's got feet that extend, and what that does is that just makes my setup here for cooking uh, more stable, especially on uneven terrain when I am dealing with boiling water. So I'm gonna roll in some footage so you guys can see that up close. Um, the stove that I use is called the MSR Pocket Stove, okay? Now, I would recommend, if you can find them, they're not as easy, easy to find as I, I think that they should be, but this one has an internal striker built into it, so that way I can ignite my uh, stove without having a, an external fuel source or a striker source, uh, such as a lighter or a ferrocium rod. So just some food for thought, you know, if I was to lose those items, um, obviously, this still enables me to ignite the, the fuel so that I can actually cook with it or obviously uh, boil the water to make it safe to drink. All right, so the next item here is a cool little bag that I picked up years and years ago at REI uh, when I was doing a lot of hiking before all my back surgeries. Um, and I've held on to it ever since, and I just, I love it. Uh, it's a great design, but this is what I call my fire and water kit. So just let me go ahead and kind of go through this, start pulling some items out. Again, I'm gonna roll in some footage so that you guys can see that. One of the things right off the top is I have an ExoTac, uh, I just call it a lighter sleeve. It's waterproof, and basically it just gives me the ability to be able to have a Bic lighter, keep it waterproof, and again, you just can't go wrong with a Bic. The next item I come to is a very large ferrocium rod. Uh, this is one that I actually picked up from a guy on Facebook that was making them, uh, but I've got a couple of these and I absolutely love them. They just, they give you a really good handle to hold on to in order to be able to get a good strike. Next up, I have a titanium spork. Now, obviously we don't have to become savages, even though that we are surviving, so a spork, is a must for your kit. Inside of here, I have uh, iodine tablets. This obviously just gives me the ability if I don't have a way or time to actually boil water to make it safe to drink, I can drop some of these in here. Although it will keep me alive, um, they're not gonna taste great. An additional fire source. Now, the reason why I chose this is because this is an electric lighter, which means that it's not gonna be affected by the wind. I bought this at some retail store, I cannot remember, and this um, has the ability to be recharged with my phone charger, which we'll get to here in just a moment. And that's the reason why I have a backup to my Bic lighter. You guys are starting to see some redundancies here, right? Next up here is I have the Frontier Pro water filter. This thing is awesome. If you've not seen one of these, um, here's your bite valve, okay? This thing essentially is set up if you like to use a water bladder. Uh, so you simply remove your bite valve, 
insert this into the tube and then essentially this becomes your new vite valve so you can fill your water bladder you know directly at a water source and you can just drink it through this filter straight from your bladder so a really cool thing but what's also beneficial about this is that let's say for example you don't have a bladder you can take this bottom piece off i've got a straw on the inside of here and so what this does is you attach this here and you can attach this to any 20 ounce plastic bottle or even a two liter because the two liters even have the same diameter of opening. You can literally screw this right onto the top and drink straight from a water bottle source. So anyway, this thing has a lot of different uh, abilities uh, in order to filter water from a couple different sources. So an absolute must uh, for your survival bag. Next up, I have a flare. You know, if there is a situation to where I need to get someone's attention, you know, maybe it's after a, you know, natural disaster such as a earthquake or a tornado or hurricane, you know, and I'm in a situation to where I need to get someone's attention, this can help me do that. So anyway, just part of my fire and water kit. I also just keep a light stick here if I need to preserve my battery uh, for my headlamp or my flashlight. This just gives me the ability to do that, okay? I've also got on this inside pocket, again, I talked about that cable. This is for my electronic lighter. I've got additional filters for my Frontier Pro. And then I've just got some hand sanitizer that I keep in here as well. And on the outside of this bag, I keep two things. I keep a trioxane bar and I've got this uh, taped inside of plastic. Um, I wanna make sure that if this was to ever get wet, I don't want the chemicals inside of this trioxane bar um, leaking into my water filters. Okay, so um, just anyway, that's how I kind of wrap that up. And then I don't know if you guys remember this. Uh, these were pretty popular many, many years ago. Um, now, I don't dip. The benefit to these little cans is they are slightly waterproof or very water resistant. And what I keep inside of here is I keep a wet fire tablet as well as some jute rope. Um, this just gives me the ability to always have dry um, kindling, if you will, uh, to be able to start a fire. So again, with this and with the items I've got here, um, there's no issues for me starting a fire. So anyway, just some things to keep in mind when you're building your own kit. All right, guys, so moving right along uh, to hygiene, okay? Uh, a couple items that I chose to carry in my kit is toilet paper, self-explanatory, right? Uh, but how I chose to kind of break this down, if you're kind of unfamiliar with how a lot of people do this, I actually take a half of a roll and I take the cardboard center out, I flatten it down and then I vacuum seal that. That obviously makes it flatter and more compressed, but it also makes it waterproof, okay? And then I take duct tape and I tape that to the outside. That way I can just peel a piece off if I need it to uh, repair my rain jacket, uh, my sleeping pad, or even my tent. So, you know, duct tape's always great to have. I've got some wet wipes, toothbrush, toothpaste, and some floss, as well as some hand warmers, okay? You know, it might just be a situation to where I'm traveling and, oh, I forgot my toothbrush or something, right? It doesn't have to be the end of the world for these types of items to, quote, save the day, if you will, all right? So that's what I keep inside of there. And I've just got a simple handkerchief. There's a million and one reasons uh, that you should carry this uh, in your bag. They just have so many different uses, okay? And this thing here is what I like to call the human chamois, okay? It's from a company called Micronet. Uh, and they make this, it's a microfiber towel. This thing will absorb a lot of water. So if you are in a situation to where your gear uh, gets completely drenched, uh, or maybe you're caught out in the rain and you just need a way to dry yourself off, this thing will absolutely get the job done. Another thing that you could use this for is that, you know, you've got your tent set up and there's a lot of condensation on your tent in the morning. Um, you could use this to potentially gather enough water that you could squeeze this out uh, and get a little bit of water uh, from your tent in the morning. So anyway, just a couple different ways to use that uh, towel. Next up, let's talk about medical. All right, so I've got a few items here. First things first, I've got an EpiPen. Uh, if you don't know what this is, this is essentially a auto injector that goes into the leg that treats people that are suffering from a severe or potentially life-threatening allergy due to whatever it may be. In my case, it's bees, so I've got to keep this on hand. Um, I have a Focus Trauma Kit. Now, the cool thing about this trauma kit is it's designed to go under a plate carrier. 
uh, for law enforcement, military, that's where they kind of got their start at. But it's very slim, so it doesn't take up a whole lot of space, uh, and it pretty much has everything in the inside of this thing, with the exception of a cat tourniquet, or soft tea, whichever you prefer. Um, I chose to go with this one so I don't have to worry about the contents getting wet. Now the next item is the sole emergency blanket. You know, this thing can treat uh, not only hypothermia, but can treat people going into shock. The benefit to having something like this in conjunction with your medical kit is that um, you know, if you're in a situation to where you need to raise your body's core temperature, uh, you can just add this in conjunction with your sleep setup in order to do that. So again, this is multi-purpose. One of the things that probably gets overlooked more than anything is sunblock, okay? So having the ability to be able to keep you from burning if you are in a situation to where you're going to be exposed to the elements for a very long amount of time, okay? So I burn very easily, and one of the things that I don't want to do is to completely fry and become miserable in an already potentially miserable situation, okay? So having some sunscreen, in my opinion, is absolutely critical. Now, next up is my, what I like to call my advanced boo-boo kit. Now, it does you no good if you get a cut that you just simply need a band-aid for if all that you have is things to essentially perform an operation right out in the woods, okay? So again, this is my advanced boo-boo kit. I'm gonna bring uh, in the camera, roll some footage in here for you guys to see. Uh, this is from a company called Dark Angel Medical, okay? I love the way that this kit opens up. Um, you know, almost like a book, giving you access to be able to kind of separate your items uh, and kind of compartmentalize that, okay? Um, so I've got a pair of trauma gloves here as well as a, a SWAT tourniquet. And uh, not only can I use this as a tourniquet, I can also use it as a pressure uh, bandage as well, all right? Now on the outside of this boo-boo kit here, I've also got some additional sunscreen. I've got some hand sanitizer as well as a, a suturing kit, okay, that I made up. Now the hand sanitizer there is for obvious reasons. You know, if I'm about to prepare to suture a wound um, or if I'm gonna be working on an injury, I want my hands to be as clean as possible. Um, obviously minimizing the chance of infection um, but obviously there uh, the hand sanitizer is there if I'm about to um, you know prepare food or eat and one of the things that I think also gets overlooked is the ability to stay awake so there could be a situation uh, that is going to force you to stay awake for a lot longer than you're used to I do see people putting like five hour energy drinks inside of their kit um, I would actually advise against that. And the reason being is picking up something like this Stay Awake from Walmart or any other type of retailer is that there are more items uh, and it's about the same size as two five-hour energy drinks. And there is 80 tablets in here and it was less than $3. I think it was $2.77. So again, this is a benefit, again, depending on the situation. If you are forced to stay awake, uh, your five-hour energy drinks are only going to last you, you know, a few hours and then they're gone. This will last you a lot longer. Now, the last few items I'm going to be talking about are just essentially equipment as well as odds and ends, okay? So basically things that kind of get overlooked or maybe things people don't necessarily think about. Um, but uh, one of the things that I do see uh, quite often in uh, bags is a way to be able to charge your phone or other types of electronic equipment. Um, so for example, my electronic lighter here in my fire and water kit, um, I do have a charger for this uh, in my bag as well. Again, just giving me the ability to be able to stay in touch with someone if communications is up and running, okay? Now this next item, I don't see a whole lot of people carrying, which is a whistle. Now this one is a Fox Pro 40. Uh, this one is extremely loud. Um, I just essentially put a piece of paracord on here. I cut it to length and uh, obviously I would just put this around my neck. If you are in a situation to where maybe you're injured um, or maybe you are trying to get um, someone's attention because you need help or assistance, okay? If you're in a situation where you're having to stay where you are, you can only yell for so long. Your lung capacity has, you know, its limitations. And if you yell for so long, you're going to lose your voice, okay? It takes very minimal effort uh, in order to blow this. And so this could potentially save your life, okay? So I think that this is a really cool item to have in your emergency kit. Again, it may not be uh, the end of the world, but you do need to get someone's attention. 
that will absolutely get the job done. Uh, next up, you need the ability to stay hands-free. So what I've got here is a black diamond uh, hands-free um, light source. Um, I take the batteries out and put them inside of here so that that way that they uh, don't drain uh, while it's sitting inside of my bag. The last thing that you want is to be in a situation to where you need the item, you go to use it, and the batteries are dead. So um, whatever that you keep that uh, in your bag that requires batteries, make sure that you take those batteries out so they don't drain, okay? Next up is I have uh, just this little, this actually was a magazine carrier. Um, so what I decided to, to do is use it as kind of like my little emergency kit, if you will. So I've got a Theorem uh, battery cell. Uh, so it's got three 123 batteries in it. On the left side here is I have the Surefire Outdoorsman. I know that there's, you know, light technology has come a long way and there's um, better lights out there with more candela. Uh, this one is just, I've had it for a really long time, has some sentimental values, and it also gives me the ability um, to attach to a hat very easily so that I can also be hands-free. Uh, and on the center or the inside of it, I carry a, a multi-tool uh, from Gerber. Uh, this was actually given to me from a friend and um, I've had this for a really long time. And so again, it just has sentimental value uh, and that's the reason why I still uh, carry it to this day. And up on the top is I have a uh, right in the rain pin. It's one of these collapsible ones. It kind of breaks down and fits inside of itself. Um, obviously, this is for my right in the rain pad. I also have a marker, which will also write on the right in the rain pad. And then it's, of course, duct tape to the outside of that. Um, obviously, I can use the duct tape for multiple um, sources and reasons. Uh, it also just kind of helps keep all that compact and closed. You may need to take down the information or give information to someone else. So just having the ability to be able to write communication uh, is essential. One of the other items that I carry is bug spray. I believe that this is important. You could probably ask anyone who survived Katrina at how bad the mosquitoes were. Um, and if you were in that situation, you were absolutely gonna want some bug spray, okay? Now, I can tell you from personal experience, if you have bug spray and it's not in a waterproof bag and it leaks, it is absolutely gonna eat a hole through anything that it touches. It absolutely sucked and it ruined some very expensive gear of mine. So anyway, just a forewarning. Now, one of the things I wanna mention here very quickly that I don't see a lot of people talking about is eye protection, okay? Uh, this is the roll bars from ESS. Now these break down so you can change your dark lenses to light uh, to clear lenses. You know, I see a lot of people talking about, you know, if there's something that happens, they're gonna get their bag, they're gonna run through the woods in the middle of the night so they don't have to run into anybody, right? In theory, that's a great idea, but the reality is, is that if you don't have a way to protect your eyes, uh, you're gonna be in trouble really quickly, especially at night. So these are ballistic rated. So not only can I use these at the range, riding a motorcycle, um, you know, I can use these obviously to protect my eyes against the sun, uh, but in those low light or no light uh, situations, I can take these and pop these lenses out, put clear lenses in them, and obviously protect my vision, which is absolutely critical. Now, one of the other items I added to my bag, which I absolutely love, is this Sig Sauer Axe. This is a collaboration that they've done with Hogue. It's very thin, uh, or of course has a thin profile. It's got really nice G10 handles with these grooves cut into it. With this added lip, this is uh, obviously going to enable you more control uh, when using this thing, uh, especially if your hands are wet. Now, this thing has two different forms of retention. So you've got your carrier here that can be attached to a bag or some other type of uh, item, but it has magnets as your primary form of retention. And then you have a manual locking mechanism as your secondary form, all right? Just ensuring that it doesn't come off, okay? Now, the biggest benefit to this one is the ability to add uh, this pry bar to the back of it, okay? Uh, they actually sell uh, two other different types of attachments, um, but this one, in my opinion, was the most beneficial. Uh, so obviously you could imagine in a type of situation to where you needed to gain access to maybe an old abandoned building because you need to take shelter for the night, right? Uh, this is gonna give you the ability to be able to pry a door or window open uh, in that type of situation, okay? So a, a definite must, in my opinion, for my particular kit, 
And the last thing I'm going to be covering, guys, is navigation, okay? There are a lot of different things that can call satellites to go down, rendering uh, your phone's navigation, GPS inside of a vehicle uh, useless. And so if you are in a situation, uh, you could imagine the people that were fleeing Florida from the uh, onslaught of hurricanes from a few years ago. Um, some of these people were just stuck in traffic for over a day trying to just get out of the local area, okay? So having the ability to be able to navigate back roads to potentially save your life and get you to an area that is safe for you and your family obviously is critical. Uh, I do have some other maps that are very specific to my local area, so I can't show you those, uh, but having something like this as well as a compass, okay? Uh, this is not a very expensive compass. I picked this up at a local retail store. Uh, this one is from Silva. I think it was around $25 or less. You know, they're not very expensive, but you need the ability to be able to navigate not only your local area and your back roads, but also to uh, your particular region. All right, guys, so I was on my way to work and I wanted to take this opportunity, swing by one of my local um, parks and set the tent up just to give you guys an idea of what the tent looks like when it's set up, uh, its color, as well as the configuration on the inside. Now, if you're prior military, you do a lot of, you know, outdoor activities, hiking in lower temperatures, those types of things, and you guys are going to be very familiar with layering systems, okay, or the system of layering. Very important, obviously, to keep the sweat at a minimum when you are um, working outside to obviously prevent hypothermia, getting too cold, those types of things, right? So again, I've approached the same method, if you will, to the outdoors as to helping me keep warm in lower temperatures, especially in order to help me save on weight, okay? All right, guys, so the tent that I went with is called the Snug Pack Ionosphere. <clears throat> now, as you can see, it's very low profile. Um, you know, don't pay too much attention to that. I just had to set it up very quickly because I was losing light, uh, but for the purposes of this video, it'll work. Again, you can see it's low profile. Um, this one is gonna give me the ability to blend into the natural environment. If you take a look at the type of color compared to the tree um, you know, canopies over there, um, you can imagine in a very wooded area, this is gonna blend in very well to the natural environment, okay? All right, guys, sorry, it got really dark on me really quickly, but as we say, the show must go on. Um, I've got an emergency light here that I use for filming um, on location, so um, hopefully the camera will be able to focus. Uh, again, I do apologize. So uh, what we have here, the silver, is a two-person emergency bivy bag, okay? So I wanted this one specifically because it's large enough um, to accommodate a sleeping bag as well as my sleeping pad. Uh, the sleeping pad is from Big Agnes. Now, it's very important if you're unfamiliar with how this, how the sleeping uh, pad system works is you have insulated and uninsulated. If you're camping in the summertime, you want uninsulated. If you're camping in lower temperatures, you 100% want insulated, okay? If not, it's gonna be like sleeping on an ice block in cold temperatures. Now, as you can see here, I've got the sleeping pad inside of the actual bivy itself, okay? This just adds an additional layer between me and the bottom of the tent because this is where it's gonna be the coldest in lower temperatures. Okay, now the sleeping bag that you're seeing here is also from Snug Pack, okay? It's called a jungle bag. It is not rated for colder temperatures, but this would give me the ability in conjunction with what you see here to stay alive for the night, okay? And that's really the key here. It's not gonna be for comfort. Now, if the temperature continues to drop and I need additional warmth, okay? A couple things that I can do. Um, I can use this emergency blanket here that is also used for hypothermia and other medical emergencies. I can use this as a blanket or I can put this underneath uh, the actual tent itself. I can also line the underneath with leaves and softer debris uh, around the campsite if I have time. Obviously the situation is always going to dictate you know those types of things. In conjunction, another cheaper option that you can go with to up the rating on your already sleep system is you can buy something like this. Uh, and all this is is a very thin fleece liner that goes inside of your bag uh, and that will actually raise the core temperature or it will raise the temperature rating of your bag. Now, each one is different. This one's very thin, but as you go up in thickness, it will increase the rating um, ever so slightly. So that is just a look at how I 
choose my layering system in order to help me um, save on weight, uh, but also to increase my survivability in lower temperatures with my particular setup. All right, guys, so that is going to be a wrap here on my own personal bug out bag. Again, if you are new to preparedness or you're a seasoned veteran, you've been doing this for a very long time, I truly hope that you guys were able to find something beneficial to you in this video. Now, if you like this kind of content and you would like to support the channel, you can do that by simply clicking the like as well as the subscribe button. And if you feel so inclined, share the video with other friends and family. Obviously, that will help this video get out there to be seen by more people. To my subscribers, I want to thank you guys again from the bottom of my heart, you know how much your support truly does mean to me. And until the next video, guys, take care. Be safe.